good so today we will discuss about central processing unit that we have already discussed but we'll have a brief idea of this today okay so as we have already discussed that cpu is known as the brain of a computer right without cpu the computer is nothing we can say that fine this is because it processes or executes the instructions given to the computer so whatever instructions we give to the computer it first goes into the cpu and then only it executes those instructions now any type of instruction given to the computer using any of the input devices has to be sent to the cpu for execution just i just told you this thing right so in a microcomputer the cpu is based on a single chip which is known as microprocessor so we we people we people will um, has have also got the microprocessors or processors on our system so let's suppose i am using dell laptop on which i have intel core i5 processor okay so in order to know about what processor do you have on your system do you know how to check Dino. that okay zynos good and what about you chetan intel code mm, i5 i5 so same pinch i have also I, got I have a ryzen 75800x okay great because uh, you usually use your system for lab gaming right okay what game do you play uh cs go fortnite and pubg pubg cs oh great fortnite okay okay good so fine a typical cpu has the following components cu that is control unit alu that is arithmetic logic unit and memory registers we will study about the memory registers in this topic in this very topic now cpu what is cu control unit is okay what i have what have i told you about this what is a cu what is a control unit it controls the all of the operation in the system okay how does it control the operations ha bhumin what is a control unit control unit ma'am uh, is a central unit for a uh, cpu how? it is used for a cpu and uh, it computes bus it computes so are uh, did didn't i tell you something about signals and sense the control signals and all it the center control in the computer exactly it sends the control signals basically so the control unit manages the instructions given to the computer so whatever instructions you want to give it manages those instructions right it coordinates the activities of all the other uni units in the system so it basically it works as a coordinator okay by instructing rest of the components of the computer it reads and interpret instruction from memory and transform them into series of signals so it transforms any of the instructions into signals to be executed or stored so it tells the components whether you have to store this particular instruction or whether you have to execute this particular instruction and display to the user okay it also directs the movement of these electronic signals so how, uh, from where does these signals travel these signals travel from memory and alu or between cpu and input devices hence it controls the transfer of data and information between various units so basically it's a controller also it's a coordinator it's a controller the user's program provides the basic control instructions conceptually the control unit fetches instructions from the memory decodes them and directs the various units to perform the specified function fine now comes alu so what i told you about alu Bhuvan, can you automatic and logic yeah. operator yeah it is performing alu okay uh bhumin what do you understand by arithmetic operation ma'am arithmetic operation is used for logical and mathematical calculations and uh, 
multiplication, division, subtraction, addition, okay, and, and logical operation. Plus. What do you understand by the term logical operation? Logical operation, as in uh, the maths and the fundamental operations done by the computer. How? How? What? What? Can you name some? The microcomputers uh, compute and uh, solve the mathematical operations. So uh, mathematical from uh, binary language and they convert binary language into normal computer English. Okay. So fine. So ALU or uh, arithmetic logic unit or ALU performs two type of operations. Those are arithmetic and logical. Arithmetic operations are the fundamental mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and uh, shifting operations. But logical operation consists Boolean operation. Boolean operations are those operations, yeah, or Boolean comparisons are those comparisons in which you will get the answers in either true or false. So logical operations basically are those operations in which we will get the answers in true or false. Like if I'm comparing two values, if five is greater than two, then it will give me the answer in either true or false. So those are your logical operations. Basically the comparisons are made. Okay. Then comes your memory registers. This is an important part. Now comes what is your memory register? So as you know, the CPU processes data and instruction with high speed. Okay, there is also movement of data between various units of the computer. So whenever we fed some instruction, whenever we feed some input to the computer, into the computer, it there is a movement of that data, of that particular data between various units of the computer, right? It is necessary to transfer the processed data with high speed. Even the user wants to display the, uh, to have the answer, to get the answer in, in a very rapid speed as well. So the computer uses a number of special memory units called registers. So basically registers are your memory, special memory units. Okay. So what we can say. Registers are your special memory units inside the cpu it is placed inside the cpu and it it is the special memory unit basically so what does it do now okay first thing is special memory unit that you have to remember next a memory register is a sort of special storage area so it's a storage area that holds data and instructions temporarily during processing so what does it do next? It holds data and instructions temporarily. It doesn't store any data permanently. It just holds your data as well as instructions temporarily. Okay. And it is a storage area fine it's a storage area next comes so special storage area that holds the data and instructions temporarily during processing they often hold data for less than a millisecond so it holds the data for less than a millisecond that this high speed storage area makes processing more efficient now the content of the memory is stored only as long as the microcomputer is turned on. So the content remains in the memory in the register as long as the your computer is on. When you turn the machine off, the contents also get lost. Okay. The company of the the capacity of the memory to hold data and instructions varies in different computers. The original IBM PC could hold approximately several thousand characters of data or instructions only, several thousands only. But modern microcomputers can hold millions or even billions of characters in their memory. Okay, so what we have learned about registers, registers are basically special memory units inside the CPU and it holds the data and instructions temporarily. As soon as your computer turned off, your the content inside that memory inside the registers also get lost 
it's a special storage area it can store up to several thousands or millions or billions of data nowadays it can store up to millions and billions of data but that is temporarily yes women ma'am how much is the data stored in measured in mb or gb okay that is the capacity of your hard disk registers are basically not that much big it doesn't have that much capacity okay Ma registers are very uh, small uh, is it uh, computers are storing the memory in uh, zeros and ones or uh, is it stored in uh, different type of form zeros and ones Got it is stored as zeros and ones only okay So Chetan, have you got any doubt in this CPU? Chetan, any doubt? Better no, tell me. Okay. So Gitika, we have already discussed about CPU. We will start with output devices now. Okay. Now output devices are basically, you know, output devices receive information from the CPU and present into the present it to the user. So in the desired form. so whatever format the user wants to uh, have it presents a data to it okay output device include monitor oops output devices include monitor printer plotters etc now we will learn about them so monitor or basically these are also known as visual display unit so first uh, output device we are discussing Just give me a moment. So we are discussing about output devices. First one is your monitor, also known as VDU. Full form of VDU is what is the full form of VDU? Visual display unit. Very good. That is visual because it is used to uh, visualize the same things. Visual. display unit okay so vdu visual display unit is just like a television screen and it is used to display data and information so when some data or instruction is being keyed in the monitor displays a character being typed so as you are able to see view the screen also so this is also with the help of your monitor only good ma'am okay the monitors are available in various sizes they may also differ for different types of computer standard size is 24 lines by 80 characters the output displayed on the monitor is called soft copy so whatever we are seeing is this soft copy it is termed as soft copy and do you understand what is hard copy which we are print which printing. is printed ma'am it is uh, hard and you can feel it ma'am hard exactly. way so soft copy is we can say your digital data digital data data which is on the screen right hard copy is your printed data okay data which is on which is on paper and you can handle it okay so soft copy is your digital data basically and hard copy is your printed data okay now comes so there are two types of monitors crt and tft lcd monitors so crt monitors are basically your relatively older type of monitor it is rarely being used today they were bigger and bulkier monitors and hence took lot of desk space it also consumed lot of electricity let me show you the crt monitor okay so these were your crt monitors so they were bulky very big in size okay they take 
a lot of space consume lot of electricity and even the pictures on this um, these type of monitors were also not clear okay have you seen these type of monitors any one of you yes ma'am okay ma'am okay so they were the older type of uh, monitors right so crt crt stands for cathode ray tube okay so it, it generally has a cathode tube at the back of it so that is why it is big and bulky fine so crt monitor is relatively older type of monitor rarely being used today bigger and bulky monitors took lot of desk space consume lot of electricity so i am making the notes also of this okay hmm so your first is crt full form is cathode ray tube mm. okay so they were big and bulky took lots of space okay took lots of space consume more electricity and images are also not clear on these type of monitors okay so nowadays what we are using is your lcd monitors okay the full very good very good the full form of lcd is liquid crystal display okay so the full form of lcd is liquid crystal display so these are flat these have flat panel screen so whatever we are using nowadays those are your lcd monitors flat panel screen consume less electricity and bit exactly and less space pictures are more clear right pictures are more clear even we can say even we can see the hd videos on our monitors nowadays right guys is this visible to you or should i increase the font size yes ma'am it is visible okay fine <clears throat> so tft stands for thin film transistor or liquid crystal display monitors these monitors are lighter occupy less space commonly referred to as flat screen display and consume much less electricity than crt monitors nowadays even light emitting diode monitors are available so what is the difference between lcd and led monitors can anyone tell me anyone have any idea about this ma'am li uh, liquid led uh, no, no, no. sorry sorry no 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 the full form is light emitting diode leds so basically uh, maybe you people are using lcd uh, monitors or lcd laptops mine mine is the lcd one how can i identify that it's an lcd one because when i view my laptop from certain different angle when i am in the front of my monitor i am able to view the screen very clearly okay when i'll change my angle and I'll shift myself to the extreme right or extreme left the screen would be black for me have you observed this are you Sorry, getting my point could not hear you ma'am okay fine i'm repeating once again so basically in lcd monitors what happen when you are sitting in front of the monitor the the screen is very much clear to you okay it is bright it is clear but whenever you shift yourself to certain degree to extreme right or extreme left 
the screen would get black for you it turns into a black window have it have you ever observed it yes so, ma'am many times so just just keep your laptop and go to certain uh, right side or left side then you will observe some blackishness on your screen okay that is because of your lcd monitors but when it is led monitor then from wherever angle you you will see your monitor the picture will be clear and bright for you okay got the difference got it ma'am chetan is it clear chetan you there yes ma'am is this clear yes ma'am okay fine so the full form of led monitor is light emitting diode so this was about monitors now we will discuss about printers now printer is a device that produces the output on paper right it produces the output on paper which is also known as hard copy and it may be in the form of text it can be your text it can be your letter or it can be graphic it can be your picture whatever so there may, there are many different types of printers these printers vary in terms of size speed and quality of output now some of them are discussed below so nowadays with what type of printer do we use is your laser printer basically this type of printer we use okay now first one was dot matrix printer it's a type of impact printer now i am telling you about these two terms what is the impact and what is a non impact printer okay two categories impact and non impact printer okay so impact printer when there is a contact between um your paper and printing head then it it is your impact printer okay so when your paper and printing head collides with each other like this it rubs each other then it it is your impact printer and non impact no contact between paper and printing head basically okay now first one is your dot matrix printer dot matrix printer was your impact printer because there was a direct contact between a paper and the printing head okay it was noisy it makes a lot of noise okay it prints by creating the dots so have you ever seen like uh, while we were very very young while we were kids okay so um we learned the alphabets by tracing the alphabets by tracing on the dots of the alphabets or the um uh, on our bade uh, asiam like this by tracing the dots right did you do that so exactly in this same manner dot matrix printer works it creates the dots and then only it prints on those it prints on those dots i will i will let you know the working also for, but first of all we will study about this so for, first of all it is an impact printer that uses the print head to print characters on paper so characters are basically it can be your abc's it can be your up a anar badya se am it can be your one two three whatever okay the print head undertakes back and forth so it goes back and forth like in this way or up and down 
motion on the page the print head strikes on an ink soaked red cloth ribbon that is laid against a paper the character formed are dots are and others printed on the paper so let me show you so basically it it does it it is a working like it works like this okay and let me show you this is not so this is your dot matrix printer basically you can see that this 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 was a kind of dot matrix printer can you see that how is this printing the paper printing on the paper by going back and forth are you able to see this yes, yes ma'am ma'am right and left right and left so see this this is how it prints see the picture quality see the speed right so it was slow and the picture quality is also not that good right so it's a That's dot fine. matrix printer fine next comes your inkjet printer these are non impact printer which works by spraying ionized ink on a sheet of paper so it just sprays the ink and then prints the image basically Magnetized plates in the ink spar direct the ink onto the paper in the desired shapes. I will let you know the working also is coming. These are also known as line printer. This one is an important line for you because this may come into your exam as well. Maybe in true false or uh, in fill in the blanks that in what printer is known as the line printer. So you must know that inkjet printer is also known as the line printer. Okay, I'm telling. I'm letting you know the working of this. Working of ink inkjet printer. are you able to be, uh, listen to the voice also while uh, i am playing this youtube video no ma'am no ma'am no ma'am this one is good inkjet printer so this it spreads the ink this is your drum this is your roller
so i will share this link in your uh, section as well okay so that you may view this later on just give me a moment Okay, I'm not able to read direct message. Ma'am, I yes. have the inkjet printer in my home. Really, is that inkjet printer or the laser one? Because nowadays laser printers are being used. Yes, ma'am. Had okay. to be one, but okay. that is the black and white. Black and white one. Okay, mm -hmm. that's not an issue. Good one. So I have added this on your um, resource section. So you can, you people may go to the resource section and just view the video about the working of the inkjet printer, right? So we'll okay. move forward. So we will move forward to laser printers. So nowadays laser printers are being used, which is also your non-impact printer. It works on the principle of photocopier. So it utilizes a laser beam. So basically laser beams are used in these kind of laser printers to produce an image on a drum. The light of the laser alters the electrical charge in the drum wherever it hits. The drum is then rolled through a reservoir of toner, which is picked up by the charged portion of the drum. Finally, the toner is transferred. So basically how it, it's, it is the working of the laser printer. How does it work? Basically, whenever the light, the laser light is being uh altered uh, is being hit on the electrical charge of the drum so drum the drum rolls out okay on the toner which is picked up by the charge portion of the drum so the toner transfer to the paper through a combination of heat and pressure so heat and pressure is being used to to print something okay since the entire page is transmitted to a drum before the toner is applied, laser printers are also sometimes called as page printers. So another name for laser printers are your page printer. Another name for inkjet printer is? What is the other, another name for inkjet printer? Line printers. Exactly. That is line printer. What is the other name for a laser printer? Bumen, are you still playing? Bumen. Yeah, page printer. Bumen, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Are you still playing? No, ma'am. Are you sure? Hundred percent, ma'am. Okay. So the uh, laser printers are also known as page printers. In addition to text, laser printers are very adapted printing graphics. So we need significant amount of memory in the printer to print high resolution graphics. So we need to have the high, in order to have the high resolution graphics, we need to have the significant amount of memory. Okay. Speed of laser printer, it can range from per minute. In one minute, it can print up to four to 20 pages of text. And a typical rate of six pages per minute is equivalent to about 40 characters per second. So basically the speed is four to 20 pages of text per minute. Okay. Now what is the drawback? The drawback of inkjet printer 
is that they require a special type of ink that is apt to smudge on inexpensive copier paper. So we need special type of ink for inkjet printer. Since inkjet requires uh, smaller mechanical parts than laser printer, they are especially popular as portable printer. In addition, color inkjet printers provide an inexpensive way to print full color document. So inkjet printers uh, basically are less expensive than your laser printers. Okay, next comes your thermal printer. Okay, so thermal printer, what do you understand by the term thermal? Do you know what thermal is? Ma'am, thermal means the uh, uh, thing produced by heat or uh, heat. heat. We can, yeah, exactly. So thermal just means heat. Okay, so thermal printer works on the uh, principle of heat. So how heat is produced? So thermal printers are printed that produce images by pushing electrically heated pins against special heat sensitive paper. Thermal printers are inexpensive and are used in many fax machines. So in fax machines, they're basically used. So they produce low quality print and the paper tends to curl and fade after a few weeks or months. Even uh, when you bought any kind of, you know, movie ticket, the ink on that fades away after a few weeks or months. Why? Because it got it gets printed because of your thermal printer. Done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now comes your plotter. So basically, these type of printers, what we have discussed before, they use A4 size sheets. But many a times, when I'm sorry, but many a times, your different architectures wants to show you the full page. Or, or full design of your house. So do you see, um, have you ever seen that they have a big page to display the map, basically, or to display the design of your house? So plotter is a device that is used to draw charts. Basically, they, they are very big in size. They are used to display the long, uh, big, big charts, graphs, maps, etc., with two or more automated pens. So multicolored plotter use different colored pens to produce a multicolored output, basically. Different types of plotters are available. Drum plotter, it has a paper wrapped around a moving drum and the pens move on the paper to print the output. So basically a drum plotter has a paper and a pen. Pen which moves on the paper to print the output and a paper which is wrapped onto the drum. Next is your flatbed plotter. It has a flat surface on which the paper is placed and the paper pens move to draw the output again. An electrostatic plotter has a negatively charged paper on which the drawing is made using a positively charged toner. So plotter are considerably more expensive than printers. These were the first of the devices that could print full-sized engineer, engineering drawing with colors. So who used this? The computer-aided engineering applications such as CAD or CAM, you must have heard about this. Uh, so they use the people working here use the plotters. So let me show you working of a plotter. See, this is your plotter. And this is how it works. So it is used to print on large papers basically. So see, how large is the paper, right? So this is your plotter basically, okay? So next comes your speakers. 
speakers you all are aware of this the speakers are used to produce our audio output computers have sound cards that enable the computer to produce audio output through the speakers 3d audio is a technique for giving more depth to traditional stereo sound 3d sound is uh, produced by placing a device in a room with stereo speakers basically 3d audio devices are nowadays used okay and its speakers are generally used to produce the audio output fine okay so we have discussed all this yesterday so tomorrow we'll uh, discuss about the memory unit okay what is your primary memory and what is your cache magnetic type hard disk flash memory so it may take to around 2 days more to complete this chapter basically yeah 2 days more See, you have a question. Discuss the various types of printers. What's the plotter and how does it work? What is a CPU and how does it work? What are the major components of a computer? So, four questions we have already discussed. We will discuss about these tomorrow. Uh, these are the answers to your in, in text questions, basically. Okay. So, we'll have a brief idea of what is a memory unit, basically. Okay, so that we can cover it as soon as we can. So there are basically two kinds of memory, primary and secondary. Okay, primary memory is accessible directly by the CPU. So primary memory is in direct contact with CPU. Random access memory is an example of your primary memory. Okay, now as soon as that computer is switched off, the contents of the primary memory are lost. If your work is not saved, then you are com as soon as your computer is switched off, the contents also get lost, right? Now, but data can be stored and retrieved at much faster rate with primary memory as compared to secondary memory. But primary memory are uh, from primary memory, the data can be accessed at much faster rate because it is in direct contact with the CPU. Now, example of secondary memory storage device secondary are magnetic tape magnetic disk hard disk cd pen drive etc the secondary memory devices may be located outside the computer primary memory is more expensive than secondary memory fine so we have two types of memory one is primary and the other is secondary the example of primary memory is ram which is also known as random access memory ram is a type of memory that whenever a computer is turned off the contents of the primary memory also get lost in secondary memory we have an examples like magnetic tape magnetic disk hard disk cd pen drive etc okay primary memory is more expensive than your secondary memory fine now how can we measure the memory so the primary or internal storage unit is made up of several storage locations called cells. Okay. The primary unit, it is made up of several storage locations, which we know as cells. Each of the cell, cell can store a fixed number of bits, which, which is known as word length. So you must be aware, you all must be aware of these terms. Okay. That what is your primary memory? What is your... Uh, uh, storage location what is a cell what is your word length you all should be aware of these terms okay now each cell has a unique number so every cell every storage location has a unique number which is which we known as the address like we have in, we have the address of our house we are living in our house so house can be compared as your cell and we have our house number that is the address of the cell okay and it is used to identify the cell. So how do we identify your house by, by your address, right? So hence we can say that memory is like a large cabinet containing as many drawers as there are addresses on memory. Fine. Now, 
we know data in a computer is stored in the form of zeros and ones okay because computer can understand only one language that is your binary language which is in the form of zeros and ones now each of these digit is known as a bit so one zero is known as a one bit one one is known as a one one bit so each of these digit is known as one bit so when when i combine eight bits it becomes one byte so let me share the screen so i'm telling you about eight bit is equal to one byte so how does one byte forms it when eight bits are combined together then one byte is formed and before that we have four bits combination also which is known as one nibble so four bits is equal to one nibble eight bits is equal to one byte okay then comes 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte okay this is kilobyte again 1024 kilobyte is equal to 1 can you please tell me this is 1 mb that is megabyte fine 1024 megabyte is equal to 1 gigabyte this is gigabytes okay so when four bits combine it makes one nibble when eight bits combine it makes one byte 1024 bytes is equal to 1 kilobyte and so on it goes on like this so is this clear till now yes ma'am chit yes ma'am okay getting is this clear beta yes ma'am fine so you must be aware of these terms as well okay let me save this okay fine now rest of the chapter we will discuss tomorrow so what is your